uh, bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Does any board members have anything or Brian? No, I don't have anything. Okay, good. Uh, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of September 8th, 23rd and October 5th? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. There might be a correction for September 23rd. I believe it should be September 21st. Okay, so noted. You see it? I can't see it. You'll have to just read it. <laughs> well, I've got the, the first is right. Monday, September 21st, 2020. Okay. Yeah, it so, should be the 21st. Okay. So with that correction noted, is the board prepared to be, uh, approve the meeting minutes of September 8th, 21st, and uh, October 3rd? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Or October 5th, excuse me. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, the, the meeting uh, minutes of September 8th, I haven't seen any alteration in them. We were on the 21st, I think, when we talked about them, uh, we were going to uh, check, uh, check some of the uh, language. And I haven't that's, seen any revision. That's true. I recall that. Uh, is Donna, she's on tonight, right? Yes. Can you uh, open her mic? Uh, yeah. Okay, Donna, go ahead. Yeah, okay. I, I had forgotten about that, that you guys wanted to, to see um, some stuff added to, um, to the September 8th. So I guess I will have to do that and send it out to you before the next meeting. Okay. Would Mr. The board... Chairman, I revise that to the 23rd of September and the 5th of October. And the 21st of September. And... Yeah, 21st, yeah. Is that a friendly amendment to the seconder? Yes. Okay, we'll drop approving the September 8th. Any other discussion? Well, I think we've already approved September 21st. Um, and what we had was, I think on the 21st, isn't that when we had the uh, health board? And That is, and we had a discussion, a question about uh, a statement by Willie Noyes. Yeah, so we didn't approve the health board, but we approved the the minutes of the 21st. Yes, I suppose you're right. That it, it is uh, specifically the, not the select board minutes, but the board of health minutes uh, for the 21st remain. Who's on first, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> okay, as I understand it, the meeting minutes that we're looking at are September 21st health board meeting and October 5th, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the health board, we were going to look at the language of, of Willie Noyes of whether or not he was going to repair or not going to repair the building. That was the question. Uh, okay, another set of meeting minutes that need corrections done. Um, Donna, did you hear this? Yeah, uh, I did go back and look at the um, at the recording for that Board of Health thing. The question was whether he said he was going to correct the deficiencies or whether they would not be corrected. And he, he clearly said the deficiencies would not be corrected, which kind of fits with his lawyer saying that he thought having the place condemned was going to be the only way to get the people out of there. So... Yeah. I mean, if somebody else wants to listen to it and confirm, you can, but to me, it sounded very clear that he said the deficiencies would not be corrected. So in, in your opinion, the meeting minutes reflect exactly what was said. Yeah, that, that's what I think. Well, I haven't listened to the minutes. I did listen to him when he said it, and I clearly thought he said otherwise, but, uh, and I would say that I don't think that uh, the, the question of eviction and the question of sale are totally separate and different in terms of uh, whether or not one might pick something or not. You yeah, probably well, don't want to sell a condemned building. 
Yeah, uh, it does make sense that he would eventually want to correct it, but what he said was that the deficiencies would not be corrected. So if someone else wants to listen to it and decide what the minutes should say, that's that's fine with me. And I would draw my motion, Mr. Chairman. The motion's being withdrawn. Uh, the seconder approves. Yeah, and, and I actually didn't realize when I made the second that, that this is the set of minutes we're talking about. I was not even at that health board meeting, so I wouldn't even be able to vote on that. Same here. So, okay. So does the board want to take up separately the October 5th and then take up the 21st? I would move October 5th minutes be accepted as written. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. can. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, with regard to the September 21st health board meeting minutes, what's the board's pleasure there? I don't, I think with Nat being absent, you don't have enough people to actually approve those minutes. No, you don't. True. Because you're recusing yourself, Kyle. And Doug, you're recusing yourself, or are you? Um, I'm not going to recuse myself on that, but I'm. I had a clear understanding. I haven't listened again. I understood that he was uh, fixing it. I probably, you know, he isn't the clearest enunciator of all time, but uh, I think I'd probably ask him just out of curiosity, not that the record, not that that would change what the record is, but uh, it would help me, my confidence. Well, the intent of the meeting minutes is to accurately portray what the meeting was. Uh, going back and asking for clarification really wouldn't be in proper order, I believe. Oh, I, I agree with you. It might help me vote in favor of it, though. Mm -hmm. Do you want to reach out to him? Sure, I'd be happy to call him. Okay. You know, if he if he misspoke but said he was not going to fix it, the records say you should say he was not going to fix it. If he said he was not, and that's what he meant, it still is the same. You know, we're going to go with the record. Right. Okay, so we'll come back to those two meeting minutes at a, a future meeting. Okay, uh, Rosemary, you got the floor. You unmuted her? Yes. Okay. I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. On the budget status report. date we're at 22 percent of money spent per budget and income is at 88 percent or maybe it's 68 no it's a 68 percent um we have received the second installment of state highway money. And usually our pilot money and A&R money comes in at the end of October. So we should be receiving those any day now. And on the current taxes, the, to date we have collected almost 39%. Last year at the same time, it was 38%. And two years ago, it was at 40%. And I put over a list of the current 
taxes. I'm not sure if you want to send those to the attorney in December, like we always do, or do you want to wait until the pandemic is over? I we have about 85,000 in delinquent taxes. Is that in line with uh, normal? Yes. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? Do you want to send that over to the tax collector attorney? We usually do it at the end of, end of December, first part of January. Okay, so we can come back to that. Yeah. Okay. And um, the Land Records Company is coming next Monday to start uh, skimming the Land Records books for our grant. And we'll, we have to do a um, status reporting on November 1st, then again in middle of December. They tell us they're gonna have everything, all the years completed that we um, got the grant for, for the $25,000. And we've got about, um, collected about 700 absentee ballots so far. And we still got two weeks left of the election. So we may have over a thousand. And now, just absentee. Yeah, that will be a record for absentees. Yeah. Usually, usually it's around 400. Okay. Great. Anything else? That's all. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? And as of right now, we're tentatively looking at scheduling an abatement hearing for next Monday, probably seven o'clock, correct, Rosemary? Yes, Robin is was still away on vacation today and I'm gonna to try to reach her in the next day or two, see if she's okay. back. Um, hopefully we'll have some JPs that actually show up Historically, they're not, they don't have a good record of uh, participating, but hopefully we'll have some. This JP always shows up. Yes, you do, Mike. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Got any questions for Rosemary? If not, thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, you didn't have on here a report from Brian? Um, I didn't. That's a typo. Brian has his uh, monthly report today. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. You got the floor. Uh, I'm sorry, Kate. We're going to have to delay you a little bit. That's uh, that's my typo. So we'll catch up in just a minute, and then it'll apply, uh, Sophia, to you also. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, I won't take very long. Um, Brian has my report, pretty standard stuff. We finished the Clay Hill project, that's done. Um, we're almost ready, the trucks are almost ready for the winter, we're still working on that. We did have an MSHA inspection last week. We did pretty good, there was nothing wrong with the, the pit. He was, he was happy with all the, you know, with everything in there and everything going on and he found an error in our paperwork from the original paperwork that we got cited on. So it doesn't get any lower than the citation he wrote us. So he said it starts at $118. Could go a couple hundred bucks. Um, but it, what it was, was we did, did not have the pit address in the paperwork. So they, nobody else had, in the last four, four years, nobody's found that, but this guy did. So he cited us for that. One issue that, that I do need to make you aware of, and it's not gonna be much of an inconvenience, but there is nobody qualified or nobody that wants to take the responsibility for the mine, uh, the safety program. So when I, when I leave, I'm gonna have to prematurely close the mine Every year we close it when it gets cold. I'm gonna to have to close it a little bit early. Otherwise, we would, you guys would be 
up for potentially heavy fines for not having somebody in charge of the safety program. So when the new guy comes in and gets trained, then that problem goes away. That'll happen during the winter when nobody's working in the, you know, in the pit anyways. But that's just so you're aware that's what's happening. Okay, thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, this, this is my last report and I just wanted to say, it's been nice working with all you guys and I appreciate it and yeah, that's, that's, um, that's it. I'll be going. This would be my last week. I have another week and then, and then I'll be gone. Well, thank you, Brian, for all of your work over the last number of years and contributions. It's going to be missed and surely appreciated. Best of luck. Does anybody have any questions for Brian? If not, I'm sorry, Kyle? Eric, just a, two quick ones. Um, Brian, um, what? I, I've lost track of what, when, I thought that we were supposed to be um, getting Plot Road uh, paved this year, or did? That got pushed off. If, if we get the, the grant money next spring, we can use that towards towards doing that the project's still in place is just not we're not taking action on it we're waiting for some some funds for the you know with the state okay okay so that's still like number one priority once we do get that those funds Abs absolutely okay okay i was just on it today and it was super rough and i was like wait i thought we were supposed to pay for that yes. um that okay. one and and overhill Right. Are on this are in the same project because overhill is really bad as well. Got it. Okay. And then just a quick question with um, having to close the pit a little bit early. Are we have we gotten all the material out of there that we will need for the winter? Will that we won't really we won't really need any in the winter unless we have like an emergency. And depending on when it happens, the banks will be too froze to dig into it anyways. So okay. We're making gravel now until the end of the week. We'll get a big stock stockpile. We're going to haul some of that stockpile to our staging area where we can get it. So if we need it before it freezes into a hard, you know, rock, then we can we have it there to, to access without violating the the MSHA rules by going into the mine and and loading it. Okay, great. And um, lastly, yes, thank you. We will we will miss your your um, presence and your willingness to be um, so good about the public works side of your job and helping out with community projects as well. So thank you for that and good luck on your new adventure. Well, you're welcome, and it was my pleasure. And yeah, I'll, I'll miss this place. It's I like it out here. <laughs> you do have all of the winter sand piled up right correct yes we do okay we do and i'll have i'll have a a good list of projects for you know for jason to take care of until we get somebody in my place there's there's plenty to do and, and he'll have plenty of direction okay. thank you and i would just also like to add that the way it's shaping up there, there's going to be no overlap, and I might not even see this guy if his if his test doesn't come through in time. Um, just so you know, I'll be available, and he can call me anytime. And I, I have a little notebook I'm writing down, kind of things that I think are important that he knows. Um, he'll have my number. He can call me anytime. I can I can walk him through projects whenever needed. Good, thank you. Appreciate that. Very nice of you. Okay, anybody got any further questions for Brian? If not, then we'll move on to Kate Wanner from Green Mountain Club. Thanks again, Brian. You're All welcome. right, Kate, uh, you can go ahead and unmute. And uh, who do you have with you tonight, Kate? Yes, um, so Kate Warner and I'm a project manager at the Trust for Public Land. 
And then Molly Flanagan is here from Green Mountain Club. And Gannon Osborne is here from Forest Parks and Rec at the state of Vermont. So uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Um, uh, we first wanna thank you for supporting the Cotting Hollow acquisition, which we finally closed in early September, and that is now permanently protected as an addition to Long Trail State Forest. Um, and now the same partners, Trust for Public Land, Green Mountain Club, and State of Vermont are um, working on an, an, another addition to Green Mountain, uh, to Long Trail State Forest, um, which is 14 and a half acres on Plot Road, um, as you can see on the attached map. So there's Cotting Hollow. And if you move down a little bit, thank you. Um, so this will give um, some more flexibility around um, the permanent protection of the Long Trail, as well as a place for a parking lot that road. Um, right now, there's no place to park off the road, and quite a few people um, use this access point to access the Long Trail. So um, we'd like to um, have a, a permanent parking lot um, in what currently is a log landing on this um, 14 and a half acre property um, to create a permanent parking lot for folks uh, to access the Long Trail. Um, similarly to Cotting Hollow, the acquisition by the state um, won't have a negligible effect on municipal taxes as the payment in lieu of taxes um, from the state will be at the same rate currently paid by the private landowner. The only thing it does not cover is the local agreement, um, which for this property is $2.62. So we um, talked to the Conservation Commission at their last meeting, and they enthusiastically support the acquisition and wrote a support letter, which I submitted to Brian, and I see Lois is here today. Um, and so we're here to answer any questions, respond to any concerns, and um, we'd like to request select board support of adding these 14 and a half acres um, to state lands as an addition to Long Trail State Forest. Thank you, Kate. Is there any board member that sees reason why we would not support this? If any board members have questions of Kate. I'm wondering who the acquisition is from. So this is from Gerald Bovat. Um, he used to live um, on the adjoining property to the west, which he recently sold um, earlier this summer, and he has um, moved over to Swanton. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, I would entertain a motion seeking uh, support from the select board uh, for the purchase of this land for the Long Trail Green Mountain Club. I would move that. We have motion. Okay. Is, are, okay, sorry, I'm interrupting everybody. Which, which one of you is seconding? Well, I did before Doug, but Doug can do it if he wants to. Well, no, Mike is in. Okay, we'll take Mike's first, second. We have motion, a second. Is there any more discussion on the motion? I've got a couple letters of support from members of the public. Uh, Ron Osborne and uh, Diana Osborne uh, both wrote letters in uh, expressing their support. So noted. Me meeting minutes will reflect that. Any other discussion? Yeah, I just think this is a great, this is a great move for our town on, and um, yeah, and people that want to enjoy these trails and lands, I think this is fantastic. Is the board prepared to vote? Seeing no more discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Is there anything else, Kate? Oh, that's all. Thank you for your time tonight. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up is uh, Sophia Birad. 
And I'm not sure, is all board members familiar with what uh, happened in this situation? Yes. Okay. Uh, Brian, you're gonna have to unmute okay. Sophia. Sophia, you should be unmuted. I am, I just need you to stop sharing the screen. Oh, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Sophia. Go ahead, okay. Hi, I'm Sophia Berard, and I have a, um, just a public comment about um, me being considered for the Racial Justice Committee. Um, so on Thursday, October 1st, 2020, I sent my email of intent and letter of interest to serve the community on the Johnson Racial Justice Committee to Meredith Dolan, Brian Story, and Kyle Noose. Given that my husband and I own land on the line of Johnson Village in town, I asked that I be considered for either the village or the town appointment, whichever was logistically correct. I was informed by Meredith that since my home was technically in the town, I would not be considered for the village appointment, but rather to contact Brian Story. I then emailed Brian Story directly on October 7th and resent him my letter of interest and he confirmed that he would be in touch with the pertinent information from the town. He then neglected to send me any information regarding the meeting for appointments. I found out the day after the select board meeting that I had missed it after no word from Brian's story. Here's the thing, we are all busy, we all make mistakes, we all unwittingly let things fall by the wayside, but I believe it's what we do in the wake of our mistakes in the wake of unintentional harm and disservice that we define our characters by acting justly. Again, I'm positive this was an honest mistake, but there is still time to fix it. And I believe choosing not to right this wrong could set a dangerous precedent when town officials are selecting community members to serve the public. Who else could be forgotten in the future? Tonight, I'm simply asking that I be considered to serve the community on the Johnson Racial Justice Committee as would be fair and equitable to all applicants. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. So as the board is aware, last, uh, I believe the last time we met, we uh, appointed the members for the committee. Uh, currently there is no opening. If the board wishes to reopen interviewing and interview Sophia, and others, if we so desire, then as these committee members, along with any other members, serve at the will of the select board, we could remove one or more of the committee members and therefore make an opening. And we could then uh, open it up for interviewing or soliciting new candidates or whatever the board's desire is. But first, we'd, we'd have to take the action of uh, making a spot so that we could open up the interviewing again. So I'm looking for guidance from the board on what your, your pleasure is. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, so um, I would, yeah, I'll make that motion. Um, I move that we rescind our vote on October 14th to accept Portia Foss, Eric Hutchins, and Mark Nielsen as our Racial Just Justice Committee members and reopen the interview and voting process to include Sophia Berard, the sole candidate that was unintentionally left out and not given a fair chance to compete for a committee position. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm looking for a second. <laughs> Lacking a second, the motion will die. I would like to ask uh, how Sophie would pre prefer to see this handled. You know, what uh, what mechanism would you think would be fair to the people who appeared uh, to Offie, who withdrew his name based on an assumption and wrote a letter to the to the newspaper? Um, what 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 mechanism? Uh, do you think would, would work best and be fairest to all? Yep. You're going to have to unmute her. I'm going to unmute Sophie again. Um, okay. I, and if I can interject one moment, we'll have 
an opportunity for public comment a little bit later. I see a couple of people who want to speak and you will have an opportunity, but for right now it, it's board members and their question. Um, so I, I believe that what Kyle said would be fair. Um, I think that if you rescind the vote um, that occurred on the 14th um, and then allow me to be interviewed as all applicants were, um, then that would be fair. Um, and whether or not you just interview me on that one instance, or if you pull everyone back, that's up to you, I think, because you already have heard from everybody who was on the list. The fact that I was not on the list means you have not heard from me and I would like the chance to be heard from. So I think that that um, motion that Kyle presented seems fair. Um, and that's what I ask for. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, and I said this in my motion, I think it's important to remember that the only wrong that was done in this process was to Sophia. It was not to Afi or whomever else decided chose on their own accord not to show up at the interview. Um, this is so comparing Sophie's situation to Afi's, for example, I'm just bringing that up because you brought his name up, Doug, is apples to oranges. It, it, it just, it's not even a comparison. They chose not to be at the interview. Sophie was unintentionally left out and didn't even get an opportunity to, to interview. So, um, I believe only starting basically uh, rescinding our vote on the 14th and adding just Sophie into the mix because she was the only one that was left out is the right thing to do. Okay, so clarification on your motion. Your motion still standing on the floor. Is there a second? Lacking I a would, sec. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I, I'd like to indicate why I, I don't think I would. I would absolutely love to have Sophie have been present and available. And I recognize that she didn't have the opportunity to, and it was no no fault of hers. Um, I would be, you know, I don't think that you can put the genie back in the bottle, you know. In, in this in this particular case, I'm not certain that you know. Well, first of all, we're missing Nat now, who was one of the four voters last, the five voters last time, uh, and I'm not certain where this would come out and whether Sophie would be one of the three or not one of the three. Uh, I would actually, you know, and I don't know how trustworthy it would be viewed. Would she have been thought of been getting a, a fair shot or, or not? I'd like to actually hear from the uh, people who were voted in as to what they might think of this process or what they might think should happen. Um, I see one person, I hate to put you on the spot, Eric, but. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's appropriate right now. We do All have right. a motion on the floor and I'm looking for a second. I would like the, the board to at least establish some direction on how they want to proceed before we open it up for public comment. Well, what I would say is, is I really wish all three were here because I might be interested in, in seconding depending in part on what they might say. Hmm. Doug, no. why don't you give a second so that we can open it up to public comment? Okay, I will give the second. So now we can open it up for public comment. Thank you. And Brian, would you open up the, or would you select individuals and let them speak? All right, uh, Denise, you had your hand up first. Uh, so I'll unmute you. And as a reminder for everybody else, uh, please raise your hand using the controls. It's under the particip participants tab on the Zoom controls. Uh, if you're on a telephone, I believe that it's dialing star nine to raise your hand. Uh, can folks hear me? Yes, go yes, ahead, Denise. Thank you, Denise. 
My uh, my first intention was to just try to um, give voice to the couple of people that I visually saw trying to speak, and I apologize. Uh, I was just <laughs> trying to step in and make that happen. I didn't realize we were all unmuted. Um, now that I've heard a little bit more, um, what I'd love to say is I'm I'm in recognition of Sophia's passion and passion in this town and in all small towns you know, is not always easy to find. So I hope that that is not disregarded. The only other comment I have is that, um, and I may have missed something, but I only heard two options um, toward forward momentum about this. And I, I'd like to believe that there are lots of options. So I wonder if before uh, dismissing the two options that have been voiced, that other options be uh, brainstormed, generated, and that's all. Okay. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. Uh, Jackie, I've got you up next. And and Scott, I see you. I will will get to you after uh, Diane. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, I'm in complete agreement with uh, both Kyle and Sophia. This was just an unfortunate error, an error that anyone could make, but it's real easy to just undo this. I mean, the, the three members were just barely appointed. I'm not sure that they've met each other. They haven't met. I mean, the village doesn't even have their uh, portion of the board together. I mean, this is, again, a no brainer to me where Sophia, if, you know, if Nat, Doug, if you wanted not to be here, you could put it off to the next meeting, give Sophia an opportunity to have her two minutes the way the rest of us did. And then you simply go back into your executive session and do your runoff voting again. And it might come out the same, it might come out different, who knows? But um, that's just, uh, it's just no clear to me as far as uh, muddying the waters by uh, even suggesting opening it up to people who did get the information and didn't show up for whatever reason is just um, an aside that confuses everything. That I think should be just cut right out. This is, a, this is an easy fix. I, I hope you guys uh, do the right thing here. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. And Diane. Nope, I clicked the wrong button. Hold on, Diane. Okay, go ahead. I'm okay, you can hear me? Yes, go yes, ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I have a really simple question about why you can't put what you did back in the bottle. Um, I think I totally agree with what Denise was saying. And um, I think that Sophia's request is really valid, simple and straightforward. And I don't understand why you couldn't um, do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. All right, and Scott, I've got you up now. Yeah, I'm here with my wife, Kim, and we are in agreement with the last two folks who spoke about um, Making it right. Making it right. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, I have yet another idea. Um, when we were talking about this in the very beginning, um, we were talking about possibly having a facilitator um, help the six person panel out with everything. And that was not done, which is fine. Um, but I think a facilitator is still a good idea I'm getting no's from Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, I'm pitching it. Um, I don't know if Sophia would be up for it or not. Um, I would hate to see somebody who's this passionate sort of... Um, not given a chance. Not given a chance. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Scott, Kim. All right. And Rick, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I know I brought up the opportunity for alternates to be a possibility that was discussed by the select board last week and it was not, uh, not an option, um, but it might be an option. I think somebody already asked that there be some brainstorming going on here. 
Um, I agree that I think that it was an oversight. Um, and then I don't have the exact minute in front of me, but I do know that there was a statement made um, and I believe it was at the trustees meeting that the members of the committee serve at, uh, how to say it, uh, at the boards, uh, at the, either the trustees or the select boards, but, but the committee by the fact, very fact that they're appointed uh, the board has the authority to change their decision on the appointment um, because uh, I think it was stated, I wish I, I wish I had the minutes in front of me, but it was stated that the racial justice committee serves at the pleasure of the board. So anybody could be removed if the board decided or everybody could be removed and could create, um, how to say it, um, an opportunity to correct uh, the oversight. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right, uh, Jane, I've got you up next. You'll have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, yes go ahead, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to chime in and say I agree with what most of the people here have said. Um, and it just seems like Sophie was, it seems like she was one of the very first people to even put in her name for this committee. And she was willing to be on the village or the town end of it. And she's just so passionate about it. And um, it's just a shame that a little glitch like this would exclude her from being on something that she wants so much to be a part of. Um, so I'm really supporting any way that we can get her, her voice heard as far as um, the, you know, the um, referral process and the interview process. Um, and like somebody else said, whether you decide as a board to accept her or not is up to you, but I think it would be such a shame for her to miss this opportunity because of just a, a human error that could happen to anyone. So I just agree with everyone and I hope it works out. Thank you, Jane. All right, and Jasmine, I've got you up next. You'll have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. okay, I just want to reiterate what everybody else said. Um, I kind of want to drive home the point too that Sophie so poignantly made in her statement um, that a little mistake like this, yeah, whatever, but it's what you do in the wake of that mistake. And, um, you know, what could this translate to in the future if um, we just put our hands up and said, you know, sorry, decision's been made. Um, I don't know. I think that you could very easily write this wrong. Doug, you also spoke to being kind of uncertain as to how this would look with um, if you did go back to the drawing board and considered all the other applicants and allowed Sophia to make her two minute statement and how would it look if she if we did choose her or if we didn't choose her. I think it's clear and simple. I think you're just giving her an opportunity that's rightly hers and the results will be the results. It'll be your choice ultimately. Um, so I, I, I hope that you guys make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Charles, you had your hand up. Uh, did you still wanna speak? Uh, if so, unmute yourself. So uh, my only concern is that in the past, the select board adopted a policy dealing with the removal of people from boards. And it's my recollection that it has to be unanimous by the select board to remove someone. Uh, so that would be a correction of what Rick was saying, that people serve at the pleasure of the select board. My recollection is that it takes a unanimous decision of the select board to remove someone from a board. 
and correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but that was a policy that the select board was looking into, but I do not believe we ever adopted it. And to Rick's point, yes, all committee members serve at the pleasure of the select board or the ones we appoint serve at the pleasure of the select board and can be removed for any reason. As I recall, uh, and I believe that's true, that was in a draft uh, of the appointment policy, Charles, that uh, it took a unanimous consent, uh, but there, it ended up getting removed during discussion uh, and we didn't have, uh, it's silent on uh, procedures to remove, it's appointment only. And we don't have a standing policy on how to remove a, a member. Okay, Brian, anyone else? Yes, uh, Cal Santon. Yeah, hey everyone. I uh, just want to reiterate, reiterate what the majority of the community's already said. And uh, I think it's fair to um, do a revote, including, Sof uh, including Sophie. Um, and also, you know, it's a pretty simple oversight, Brian. And, uh, you know, I'd like to hear what you think about it. How would you write this wrong? I, I think, you know, Kyle's uh, motion is, is probably the simplest way to go. Um, and so Sophie gets a fair shot. And, uh, you know, again, Brian, given that it was your innocent oversight, I'd like to hear what, you know, how you think it should be righted. Thanks all. Brian, you've directly been asked, do you care to address that? Uh, the first thing I'd like to, to say is to publicly, uh, I'd, I'd shared my apology with uh, Sophia earlier and I'd really like to extend that publicly also. Uh, this was a, you know, entirely my fault. There, there's no other blame to go around. Uh, Sophia gave us notice of her interest in plenty of time. Um, you know, I I knew that she was not uh, considered by the village, and so sh her name should have been included, and it simply wasn't. It's entirely my mistake. I appreciate everybody's willingness to understand and forgive, but um, yeah, it is on, on me at this time. Um, my opinion about how to resolve it, I didn't, ha I didn't have to, or uh, and I'm also unable to have made that decision about appointments. Uh, that's really not in my role. So I think that my opinion on how to resolve it is colored by the fact that I'm not part of the decision-making body in this. I don't get a vote. Um, so it's easy for me to say that, you know, I, I think Sophia would, would be a candidate worthy of consideration. She should have been included in the pool, but I didn't make the decision to appoint the other candidates either. So it's not up to me to be fair to everybody else and to weigh that. Uh, so I don't think my opinion counts for very much in this case. But again, Sophia, I really regret that uh, I'm at the, the root of this. So. Thank you, Brian. And then Athena has raised her hand. And uh, Eric, I see your hand also. So I'll call on you after Athena. I see Margo's as well, just for future. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for the heads up. Oh, Margo, we'll get you after Eric. Hey, sorry, this is actually Shane again, but um, I'm with Athena. We just wanted to say, Brian, we appreciate all your hard work and everything you do. Uh, and we both think that Sophia should get her shot as well. So I um, hope you guys make that decision. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. And Eric? Uh, yeah, I don't want to. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I think as one of the people who was appointed, I should also make it clear that, you know, one, it's tremendous that so many people are so interested in this committee and so interested in making sure we get the best three people. And, you know, obviously, you know, my interest would be in making sure that the board gets who they think are the people who are most able to carry out the directives of the uh, the anti-racism statement and the inclusivity statement. So uh, that's totally fine with me for the reconsideration. Um, and I, I don't I don't know Portia well, but I, I know I'm sure that Mark would be 
I don't want to speak for him, but he, he seems to be the kind of person who'd be, you know, fair-minded about this as well. So uh, no reservations on, on my part if the board wants to reconsider. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And Margo, you had raised your hand. You'll have to unmute yourself. I see you unmuted, but I can't hear you. Let's try that again. Uh, how about now? No. No, I'm I'm sorry, we can't hear you, Margo. Do you have a different microphone? Uh, <laughs> sorry, Margo. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, Margo. Mm -hmm. And you said you had one more? Uh, that, that's it, I believe. Uh, I don't see anybody else okay. uh, unless I've missed someone. So we've heard we have a motion on the floor. We've heard from the public. Is the board prepared to vote? I just, I just want to say one last thing before we vote is just to remember that this is this is a racial and social justice committee. And I feel like if we can't even get the justice part in this part of the process correct, then I'm feeling a little <laughs> um, disheartened about the whole thing. So I just I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Are you prepared to vote? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those uh, against, nay, the ayes carry. Um, Is the process. Unanimous, we've got to do the roll call. Well, uh, everyone voted in favor. Oh, I thought you had said nay. Uh, that's my mistake. No, I asked for nays, but okay. it was. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that would be political death, uh, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the process, do you want to give Sophia the two minutes right now, and then we'll go into executive session and get it uh, completed today, or do you want to do this at a future time? I'd like to do it at a future time when we have the fifth member here. We do have one request for a future time. I agree with Doug. Okay, we'll do it at a future time. Sophia, thank you for uh, bringing this to us. Uh, like Brian said, I do apologize too publicly that uh, this happened and uh, we'll give you your time. We'll do that at a future time. We'll get a hold of you, guaranteed. Yes. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, okay. Brian, we should probably go into your agenda, your report. All right. So first up on my part is, I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, designation of uh, Lamoille County Planning Commission to act as a public agency on behalf of the town uh, for working with Jenna's Promise for the redevelopment of the Barrows building, the, the old coffee house. Uh, okay. So this is a continuation of the community development block grant that we have applied for and received. Uh, they are, uh, we've engaged with them uh, on being kind of the, the management for this, uh, that again, the town, um, you know, had, had sought their assistance in this so that it would take a kind of a little bit less of our time uh, for managing the funds and doing everything else. So they'll do the reporting, management of funds, and uh, overseeing day-to-day -day parts of the project. Um, we have entered into the agreement with them informally. Uh, we need to formalize that arrangement with a form PM4 from uh, the federal government. So I'm looking for the board's approval for this and then we'll have I mean, to have everyone come in and sign it because it is 
Uh, I don't think it's any, they're asking for the whole legislative body to sign. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? I will second that. Motion is second, any discussion? Um, so, okay, sorry. Um, LCPC will provide project management and administration. Um, to, okay, sorry. Um, That's all right. So what this is, is the, when, um, when we were approached by Jenna's Promise about support for this project, the town itself was going to have relatively little uh, donation in terms of we're going to have no cash donation and a relatively low donation of in-kind projects, which would include my paid time. Right. Uh, in order to make that work, that the town has a small outlay to make this project come true, uh, we need to designate LCPC as the project administrator on this. Okay. So they, so they'll, okay. So they'll they, see. They also have to conform to all of the um, uh, agreements and standards that we have set about, you know, equal opportunity, uh, no discrimination, um, you know, that, that they practice those uh, internally and with assignment of funds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're, I'm assuming they're seeing a lot more, um, like what I've talked about before, plan, black and white on paper plans about the- Seth Jensen is very much involved in uh, the administration of the project already. Like I said, we haven't signed a contract with them, but uh, mm -hmm. they have been expected to take on the administration of this. So they've been uh, very closely working with Seth throughout the project. Okay, great. And will we, can we be pervy to those, some of that documentation as well along the way, just so we're up to speed? Yes. Okay. You know, we can get some of that and we will, uh, you know, we will be included on all the reporting and everything that goes for it. It's just, we won't prepare the reports, but right. we will still have to sign off on them. So right. we'll receive the reports you know, the financial reports, how the money was spent, who received it, we'll receive the financial reports and uh, we'll be able to approve them, ask questions, uh, do whatever oversight we, we need to do, but it won't be day to day. Okay, so this is just giving LCPC our um, uh, approval to be the project minister, uh, management and administration. Yes. Okay, okay thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And as everyone will need to go in and sign this, it also reminds me that we never made a motion on a signing the warrant uh, for Rosemary. As everyone has to go in and sign this, I guess everyone will be there anyhow. They can sign the, uh, the warrants for Rosemary. Okay. Okay. And rec committee. Next up, the rec committee. So, uh, Kim Goodell, the, the rec committee is still down a couple members and would benefit from uh, more participation. Uh, recently, uh, Kim Goodell has uh, volunteered to serve on the rec committee as uh, a new member. And the rec committee, she's attended uh, several meetings, uh, has participated as a, uh, just a member of the public and uh, is recommended by the committee for appointment. What's the board's pleasure? I move we uh, put uh, Kim Goodell on the uh, rec committee. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Um, moving on, beautification committee. So we have a few members on the beautification committee that haven't been regularly attending meetings. So, uh, and they haven't 
responded to a recent request about, you know, are they going to attend meetings in the future? Uh, so we would like to uh, remove a few members at this point. We do have one resignation to accept and that's with Angela Burton. Um, but then we have Brennan Blair and Phil Uris uh, that were also uh, thinking that they, they haven't been to meetings, they haven't responded. So we'd like to remove the slate of members. What's well, board's pleasure? Yeah. Um, What's the I, I, I move that we um, remove Angela Burton, Philip Uris, and Brendan Blair from the Beautification Committee. We have motion. Do we have a second? I have a second that. We have a second. Any more discussion? Would we accept one's resignation and remove the other two? Is that more appropriate to the circumstances? Yeah, I think that would be so. It's a good point. So would the uh, motioner and the seconder be uh, in tune for a friendly amendment to remove the two that have not been attending and accepting the resignation of, of Angela, Angela. Angela Burton? Yes. I would also. Okay. So a friendly amendment. Any other discussion? Yeah, I think I, I just wanted to say that um, I think Philip and Brennan were really enthusiastic about being on this committee, but they're they're both in construction and it's just I think I don't think this is any mal malady like they're not, you know, um, intentionally being difficult. I think it's just their work doesn't allow them to be on this committee like they had thought. So, so noted. Friendly. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. And I'll follow that up with a solicitation for new volunteers for that committee. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, another resignation, uh, the resignation of our second constable, Diane Stoney uh, is moving out of the area. She's moving up to Maine and will no longer be able to serve as our second constable. What's the board's pleasure? Accept the resignation? I move yeah. we accept the resignation. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Got a motion, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, and moving on, uh, Thankfully, uh, we also have recently uh, have been in communication with Jay Hill, who's the animal control officer over in Eden. Jay is interested in serving as our animal control officer and is interested in expanding that out to serve as our constable and uh, our second constable and our second uh, health officer as well. And I believe Jay is here to uh, meet everybody. Okay, can you please open up his mic? Yep. And he's from Eden, you said? I, Jay, I, I don't think I actually asked where you live. I, I assumed it was in Eden because you're appointed there, but... No, actually, I live in Hyde Park. Okay. Okay. Jay, you're uh, interested in serving the town of Johnson? Yes. Uh, my... my um... My youngest son goes to Johnson Elementary. I'm really familiar with the area. I've lived in Vermont now for about 15 years. Um, I've just started actually about a month and a half ago as the Eden Dog Officer. Um, I really love animals. I hate seeing animals that need help that can't get the help they need. Um, it's just something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and then Brian had mentioned something about the town constable or the second town constable and um, the second health officer, which I'm, I'm a disabled vet, so I've got nothing but time on my hands. Um, so I'm always available, which is very convenient when you never know when you're going to get a call for something to be able to have somebody that can just go. 
Have you had any experience as a health officer? No, I, I haven't. I've never done that before. But Brian had said something about if, you know, if it comes to that, you know, getting the training for it, um, which I, I'm a pretty quick learner. Um, it didn't take me long to get the Eden laws down uh, for dogs. You know, I had never done that before. And my very first call was a dog bite. So I had a crash course in how to handle dog bites and uh, actually did pretty well at it and got it all resolved in a, within a couple of weeks. Um, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm really determined person. So when I start to do something, I, I do it to the end. Okay. Board members, any questions? Um, Thank I, you for being willing to serve yeah. kind of a thankless job. Yeah. I just, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Jay, do you know Tracy? Have you, are you, do you know? I, I knew Sharon. Okay. Um, actually, um, when I actually lived in Johnson, I used to live on College Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I knew Sharon and I do know Tracy, but I don't like know, know her. I've seen her a few times with Sharon. Right. Um, I know she's an EMT and I know she's really busy. And this will relieve a lot of her stress with it having me around to be able to help her out. Yeah, for sure. I, I just asked because I know that she, um, you know, it's important that that you two uh, have a good rapport and, you know, a good working relationship. So I just wanted to be sure that that um, she was comfortable and or, or you, you know, that that would work out well. Anyone else? Is the board prepared to make a motion? So move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to appoint Jay as a second constable. Do we have a second? I will second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And Jay, just so you're willing to do the health officer uh, training bit if, if needed? Most definitely. OK. And it's it's definitely needed. It's just getting the training is a little bit difficult right now. Um, so we'll we'll work, have to work on that. But yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. The ayes have it. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. You saved me, Jay. They were talking about trying to get me to be the health officer. <laughs> There's always room. Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you very <laughs> much. You the third. No <laughs> uh, Jay, I'll be in touch about uh, paperwork and everything so we can start sending you out on jobs and you can get paid. All right. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. I'll talk to you soon. You. All right. Okay. Next one's a unique one request to remove a stone from Evergreen Ledge Cemetery. Yes. So um, I heard from Kitty Letts a while ago about, uh, about this, that evidently uh, the, there's a marker placed in Evergreen Ledge Cemetery uh, that was placed there somehow uh, it, was, it probably was placed there when her mother, Ruby Gandenberger, had purchased the plot. Uh, the, with the placement there, uh, with the stone there, she then went on and purchased another plot at a cemetery in Maine. And when she passed away, she was buried in Maine. And the stone remains here in Johnson. We are having difficulty uh, proving that, that she was definitely not buried here in Johnson uh, and was definitely buried in Maine. Uh, further complicating that, this, had, was, this request was made first a number of years ago to Lillian uh, when she was running Evergreen Ledge and Lillian had denied it uh, because there wasn't enough proof to satisfy uh, Lillian's concerns about the case. 
So we're in a situation where um, it, it's entirely possible, but we're having a hard time coming up with proof one way or the other. Uh, but that being said, does the stone really belong to us or does it still belong to the family? Uh, there, there's a lot of legal questions about this. And I, I, my recommendation is really to go to the attorney and get some support on um, what, do, what uh, level of proof do we need to move it? Uh, does it even belong to us? Can they just take it? Um, and what should we do with the, the plot after we move the stone? Go ahead, Mike. Usually when somebody puts a plot, I mean a stone in a plot, uh, they put their names on it, they put their birth date on it. And then when they die and they're buried, they put their date of death. And so uh, do we know if there's a date of death on that stone? I don't believe there is. Okay. Uh, so, so now if it doesn't have a date of death, all you have to do is probe that area uh, to see if you hit a vault. And if you don't hit a vault, then you know there's nobody buried there. Simple. Well, that answer is part of it, but we've we also... I, I think the big deal was initially when it was not approved was that they couldn't prove that nobody that nobody was buried there or that somebody was buried there. And if you probe that area, uh, which is very easy to do, you don't hit any vault because the vault is not really down that deep. If you don't hit anything, you know nobody's there. Um, I, I would say if there's nobody there, let them take their stone because they paid for it. Then how do you uh, deal with the plot? Who owns, well, they own the plot. So well, they could get, uh, they could deed the plot back over to the town. And then we could resell it. Exactly. The, Presumably the decedent owns the plot and not the daughter. That's probably, that could, yeah, that's right. But if she had any kind of power of attorney, she could sell it. The power of attorney ceases on death. All right. It, there, there may be a way around it. I, I just wonder when a person puts a, you know, puts their headstone down, does that belong to the cemetery or is it a piece of property they can pick up? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. Uh, and I and I'd hope never to know it. Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, this needs legal review. There's so many moving parts. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I, Doug, I, I know that if if let's say I bought a stone and and I was going to be married buried at uh, uh, Riverside Cemetery in Morrisville, and then all of a sudden decided that. Uh, going to be buried in Waterville or something. I would consider that my stone. I just go get it. It would be a very different question if Ruby was the one asking us. Yeah. You know, it would be if Ruby came and said, hey, I, I, I don't need this plot anymore. I want to move my stone. That's easy. Right. But it's yeah. not Ruby asking us. Well, I can't imagine more than three or four hours with an attorney. So if everybody thinks we need to talk to an attorney again, that's fine. But I, I would still go under the premise it's always better to ask forgiveness lots of time than it is permission. I wonder if uh, Ruby had any other children that might object to this. Hmm. The reason she's buried here is because she did have family here. Uh, so she is buried with a number of other family members, and there might be other family members who still live in Johnson. Or she, or 
she intended to be buried here and isn't. We don't know, right? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I think without knowing, it's a lose-lose proposition for us to try to be a good guy or good well, We ought to find out where she was buried in Maine. All they have to do is ask the undertaker up there in Maine if they buried her up there. If they said yes, then we know she's buried in Maine and they can have their stone. They cannot produce any documentation about her burial. You gotta be kidding me. No. That's probably why Lillian, all those years ago when Lillian used to control this, was had reservations about it. Yeah. They would be willing to swear to it, but yeah, we can't produce any definitive documentation uh, by an outside source about what happened with Ruby. So do you need a, a motion, Eric, or? Yes. Yes. OK, so I'd move that we send the request to remove a stone from Evergreen Ledge by Kitty Letts to our attorney for legal review. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'm waiting for Mike. <laughs> you can forget it. <laughs> I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. Kyle, how do you vote? Yes. And the chair votes in favor as well. Motion passes. Okay. I figured it would anyway, Eric. I just. Yeah. I had to give my a very similar, although different. Yeah, our next request. Uh, we have received a request uh, for financial assistance uh, with a former Johnson resident uh, who has entered hospice care at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Um, she's looking for assistance with. Or I guess I, I got the call from Dartmouth Hitchcock. Uh, they're looking for financial assistance uh, to go with cremation and her burial. Uh, I in informed them that we have no policy or procedure set up to deal with this kind of request. Um, so I, I am kind of, I think the the, Best for this is to kind of air it publicly, let it be known if anybody is willing to assist the family, I would be happy to forward contact information, but this is not anything we've ever been involved with and uh, without some serious consideration, we don't really know where this is going uh, if we do choose to get involved. The state of Vermont has assistance uh, programs, I believe too. They do. Take care of that. Um, this would be in New Hampshire. Well, I'm sure New Hampshire has something to do with that too, don't they? That I'm not sure about, but I think uh, before entering hospice, uh, she was a Johnson resident. So I believe that she would be eligible for uh, financial assistance from the state of Vermont. I would assume so too. We're, we're getting quite a bit of correspondence through, uh, is it from Lottie Rosen on, on Kranz or something about, about, you know, this type of, not necessarily this, but assistance. I, I think we ought to, uh, you know, check in a committee like that and see what they might suggest because they have a kind of coordinate among a bunch of agencies. You know, Brian, who I'm referring to? I do. Uh, I'm trying to remember what organization she belongs with. Is, she's not uh, United Way. No, they, they have a kind of a command network of all the agencies in Lamoille County. No. Yeah, yeah, she's part of that that uh, overarching team. Yeah. Uh, that I don't really know what who they started out of, but it's LCPC, Capstone, United Way. They kind of formed a command structure. Um, yeah, that's where I know her from, is some of the Working Communities Challenge work. 
Right. There's, there's been, I, and there was an email from her today in our. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that came from a United Way email, I think, or, yeah. So the, does the board wish to ask Brian to pass this along to that organization? Yes, I, I think we should do uh, anything we can to assist the family, uh, but not give them uh, uh, any kind of financial assistance from the town. Is that the general consent of the board? Yeah. yeah. Looking like it is, Brian, if you want to go ahead and do that. Thank you, I will. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, uh, kind of a big question, uh, reopening of town offices. Uh, so we've received a number of requests, uh, historical society, uh, I, I believe conservation has also made the request. Um, you know, uh, we, we've had a bunch of requests to reopen town hall and start admitting people for this again and uh, folks that would like to be able to come in uh, to use to pay their bills in person and things like that. Uh, so it is, you know, the, the, the pandemic is still underway. We're still facing a lot of challenges, but it is worthwhile with the changing, especially with the changing of the seasons with, you know, telling people to go meet outdoors, uh, that's getting more challenging and more difficult. It is worthwhile for us to revisit this topic, uh, from time to time and now being a very, uh, a pertinent time to have that discussion. Is this the public meeting space upstairs as well as the town clerk and village clerk's office? I, I had put this as kind of opening everything back up. We can choose to discuss this piecemeal uh, if we have different opinions on different parts of the building or uh, different opinions on other municipal properties like the we're, we're, the food shelf has remained open, but the Boy Scouts is one of the groups that has asked to use our facilities again. How about the relationship with our emergency management director? And yeah, that's in that committee. That's one of the reasons I brought it to this board first. Uh, there has been numerous requests that have come in over the last few weeks. One is the downstairs. Uh, one was the upstairs. The seniors have consistently been asking about opening up the upstairs. The library wants to open up. Uh, Historical Society would like to open up as well as Lisa is uh, looking at next uh, spring. Uh, we're looking at some fall activities first. Or fall activities. Uh, winter, so, I should say. Yeah, winter. Uh, because of this, we're actually having an emergency management team meeting tomorrow morning to look at all of this and see if there's some comfort level in uh, opening up some things or all things or none. But uh, I think that's probably the best place to, to let this uh, discussion happen is at the emergency management team. But I would look for some guidance from the select board if there is something you would like me to take back to that team uh, with reference to the uh, municipal building. Go ahead, Mike. We uh, voted a long time ago and we went 50-50 with the village uh, for that plexiglass barrier uh, to have the office open. Uh, there's probably not a week goes by that I don't get to see somebody uh, on the street or get a call or an email or a text actually of uh, when are we gonna open up the municipal office building uh, downstairs? That's what they talk about to me anyway. I haven't heard anything about upstairs yet. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk about downstairs. So uh, that's probably what we should look into because we had discussed way back when, once we got that barrier in that we were gonna try to have uh, as much as we could, business as usual downstairs. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, I would look for some input from Rosemary on what is not happening that would require somebody to go in there that is not able to, with the way she has it set up with, by appointment, allowing anybody to come in. 
to best of my knowledge. Uh, quite frankly, the ones that I see are not able to go in are the ones that want to go in and socialize with the employees and distract them from doing their job. But um, it, it, I guess I would really look for Rosemary for some input on is there anybody or is there anything that's not happening that should happen because of the way it's closed? The only thing is uh, paying bills. If somebody wants to do a hunting license, we can make an appointment or if they want to do notarizing, we make an appointment. People search the land records, they make an appointment. So and is there anything not, that is not happening? Just pay, paying bills, they pay them through the, the drop box. And as far as I know, no town in Lamar County is the clerk's office in, is open. Okay. That's not accurate. Wolcott is open. Wolcott's open? I didn't know about them, but they're very small. Yeah, they are. They have quite a bit of space. They have a, a, a zoning administrator and an assistant, and uh, there are two other people in the office. So there are four people in that space. Um, I think the reason that we close is that we are not, uh, we're essentially not essential. Uh, um, and we're able to protect our people. If we could close a grocery store and take the risk away from them uh, and still have food, we would close a grocery store. But we can't. And there are other businesses that we can't close. So most people have risk imposed on them. Rosa, me, I'm I'm inviting you to that meeting Tuesday morning or tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Actually, uh, I I think the team would like to hear your input as well before we made a decision on opening the municipal office. I may not be able to attend, depending on the time of it. Okay. Well, if you have any feedback you'd like to provide, okay, that would be good. Anyone else? Is there any guidance that you'd like to send me with? Well, the governor still has the state of emergency going, so. What I find is interesting, all of a sudden, one day somebody's just gonna snap a finger and just say, it's all over with or try to go back to normal. You know, it's just, uh, I don't know. I think a lot of people are getting sick of it. Well, certainly there are, and it's clear that there are only two cases in the nation that are moving in the positive direction. Everyone else is going into the toilet. Oh. And someday, someday we'll hopefully be out of it, but uh, it's a dangerous situation for quite a few people with a lot of, with a lot of collateral damage. To, I'm talking about collateral damage economically, housing, mental health, all of those things. There, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy decision because you're we're balancing opening schools against the you know potential spread versus uh, the kids' need for mental health and to be with people. You know, it's a tough tough situation. It'd be nice to be able to decide we're all okay. Kyle? Yeah, I was just thinking how um, just logistically our building is really tough downstairs. There isn't a lot of wiggle room, you know, um, to keep to keep social um, distancing. And I would hate for our employees to have to be managing that in addition to their normal everyday job. So I I think it's really important to get input from the employees to see if it's even logistically possible <laughs> for them to do um, to keep themselves and in, in the public safe. I can't quite visualize it, frankly, <laughs> how that would work. Um, what I hear more is about the upstairs, just because I'm part of different committees and whatnot, and that there's definitely, I feel, I feel a 
uh, people feeling more of the urgency to be able to meet upstairs because of the cold weather setting in. Um, and in the past, you said, Eric, that, you know, there's just not enough, um, uh, there's not an ability to clean between groups and things. So. Um, yeah, that's our biggest concern. Right, right. So again, that's a staffing thing. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. And, and the problem we have with our upstairs is those meetings may take place at virtually any time of the day into the late evenings, as well as on weekends. Right. And we just don't have the staffing to support that. Right. Yeah, not, not easy. I, I don't envy your position. <laughs> I can provide a little bit of feedback on, um, you, you were questioning about how to handle social distancing, distancing while people are using the window. Um, it would be, we could manage kind of the first level relatively well of, you know, one person can come up to the window, mm -hmm. but we can't see into the stairway and the front door from where we're at. So that's our, that's the total extent of our control is one person in front of the window at a time. Um, and we can't realistically, we can put a sign up saying, you know, maintain social distancing, you know, one person in at a time. Uh, but we can't see if they're not social, socially distant. We can't see how many people are piling up in the stairway. Um, wouldn't, so, that be, wouldn't that be relatively easy to get a camera and put it out in that room? I have some questions about cameras creating public documents that we then have to retain. Then you'd have to be like somebody watching a, a monitor and oh, somebody is too close to somebody. Then you would have to send somebody out there to tell them to get their proper space. Uh, that just sounds like too big of a hassle. I guess the thing to do is just to forget about it and move on or let uh, the emergency management team talk about it tomorrow morning. Yeah, like I said, we will be talking about it. Um, one of the other problems with that whole downstairs is there's no uh, way to direct traffic through and just have a separate entrance and exit. Yeah. They got to go right back Right. Shoulder to shoulder beside each other. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant about I just can't visualize how that would <laughs> that would work. Well forget about it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, this has been a a uh, ongoing topic of the emergency management team. We we talk about it every time we meet. Yeah. Um and we certainly uh, when there is the comfort level that in our level, uh We'll relook at uh, opening any and all places. I'll I will bring it up again, or I will bring it up tomorrow morning. We are going to meet, and uh, I'll I'll let you know if anything changes. We do have some public comment on this. Okay, yeah, open up ready? public. Okay, Kim. Hi there. I just wanted to say that the people, I like Eric's question about what needs are not being met because ultimately the people that are doing their jobs there, I don't know that we have backups for them. And I just want to remind you guys that if anything happens to them, it's going to put added stress onto the people who are trying to figure out how to fulfill the needs if any of them get sick and that so far, um, everyone's been doing a great job and it sounds like you can call by appointment and get things done and if that system's working i just i'm i want to decide with safety but thank you kim good points yeah thank you uh that was the only person i saw okay all right uh november meeting schedule the reason we had this on here is our first monday would be the night before election 
Um, I anticipate be a late night uh, election night. Do we want to get together on that first Monday? And the regular meeting, the third Monday is uh, first week of deer season. I would not be there, but if the rest of the board wants to meet, they certainly can. So I'm throwing it out for a November meeting schedule to, for discussion. And when is Thanksgiving this year? Um... Uh, it's the end of the second week of deer season. <laughs> <laughs> like it always is. <laughs> Eric, you're bringing back childhood PTSD, being a game warden's daughter. Okay, let's see. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the week after our second meeting. Okay. The fourth week of November. Okay. Okay. Uh, so sorry, Eric. What are you proposing that we meet? I'm not proposing anything. I'm yeah. just throwing it out, uh, questioning our first uh, meeting of the month is uh, Monday. That would be the night before. Uh, Right. The election. And I know Tuesday night will be late counting ballots. Uh, and then the regular meeting is just a meeting that I will not be able to attend. Right. So if you wanted to try to do everything in one meeting and do it on the second Monday, that is an option. Or uh, you can. No, the. Uh... Trustees have the Zoom. Oh, that's right. Yep. You can't do it on that. On yep. the second Monday. Yep. So if you want to leave it the way it is, I'm just. Why don't we do it Wednesday after Election Day? Do you want to do two late nights in a row? You're retired, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it on Monday and, and do our best at a lighter meeting. Um, you know, sometimes the world co cooperates with us and sometimes it doesn't, but. Six or one and a half a dozen, no, they do it on Monday. I'm, I'm actually fine with doing it on Monday. Okay. And then having what, Doug run it on the 16th? Yep. Let's. I'm good with sticking with our schedule. Okay. I just wanted to throw it out yeah, there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff's Department, that was just an email, right? You received by email the uh, Sheriff's Department monthly report for August. Um, I think I saw the September one uh, in my mail as of today. So you'll have the September one, uh, you know, today or tomorrow. Okay, the trailhead plan is Doug presenting that, or do you? Uh, have... kind of Doug, myself, and Howard. Uh, we're okay. going to try and do this. I called Howard, and he should be logging in. Yep, he's here. He's got to unmute himself, though. Does he have to? <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, Eric. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a form. Former <laughs> <laughs> hangnail. <laughs> Yeah. You're just your luck. I'm here. Well, thank you for come zooming in. All right, I was watching an episode of West Wing. I'm a happy man right now. <laughs> Mike, I'm sure that was your favorite show. Which one? I didn't hear it. West Wing. West Wing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was right at the top of the, the list. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. What do you want? <laughs> All right. So uh, a quick overview first. So the uh, we have received a notification from a, uh, the family of an individual who had, has spent a lot of time in Johnson and was an uh, active user of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, uh, active cyclist, and uh, they have, they are interested in making some kind of a gift to commemorate uh, the, the, passing of the, the loved one who had come to Johnson a lot and participated a lot here. Um, that has led to a proposal about uh, kind of a next step in the uh, rail trail. So the, the rail trail trailhead 
uh, was designed and, and constructed with grant money many, many years ago uh, from the Northern Borders Regional Commission. Um, and in that, uh, while I was reviewing those documents, I saw a lot of mentions about, you know, that this was the start uh, and that, the, that we wanted to develop that site and really make it a, a feature rich and attractive place, uh, something that would really kind of tie the rail trail into the town and make this a, a stop and a destination on, on the trail. Um, so we, a handful of folks that have been working on what would it look like if we were to make some improvements on the rail trail. Uh, Doug has been instrumental in connecting us with the uh, kind of our, our local supporters with the uh, family that, that's willing to make the gift. Uh, Howard Romero has donated a lot of time with uh, design work. We received assistance from Kate Lally over at LCPC as landscape design. And um, Duncan Hastings, Leah Kilbadi of Odd, and many others. Uh, uh, I especially want to thank Lisa, uh, our, our recreation coordinator, for her assistance in developing this. Uh, and, and that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to turn it over to Doug if there's anything else I'm missing from my introduction. No, I, I think you did really well. Howard has done the uh, structural plan um, and the uh, Kate Lally did, did a site plan. And I would, I think Howard would be the uh, uh, best person to start on the structural plan. Duncan Hastings was useful for his uh, information and connections based on his initial municipal administrator's role with regard to electrical uh, possibilities and also his connection to the Historical Society, uh, who would love to be putting uh, uh, displays similar to what you find in the Jeffersonville uh, trailhead on, on our trail site, trailhead. So Howard? Okay, um, do you folks have the drawings in front of you? Yes. Okay, well, I, I can't see the, uh, well, look, just look at the site plan is what, what I want to talk about first. Um, I think it's reasonably self-explanatory. Uh, that is clearly a site plan of the existing site. <clears throat> um, the shaded portion uh, of the building, uh, the crosshatch section of the building is what is proposed in terms of uh, new construction, um, which is very much like the old construction, only just added to it. Um, we are proposing a bunch of different things here. Uh, starting on the left-hand side, you see uh, parking that's handicap accessible parking. <clears throat> the, there's an arrow that points up from the uh, drive yard, I'm sorry, from the perimeter road uh, around the ball fields to the, uh, to the uh, rail trail kiosk. And <clears throat> that, that portion of that will, uh, that existing graded uh, grade will be uh, redone to be uh, wheelchair accessible. Um, the, uh, let me see, what kind of else can I say here quickly? Uh, what we're essentially planning to do is uh, thin out the vegetation, cut down and or thin down the vegetation on both sides of the, of the uh, rail trail head <clears throat> to give better sight lines to people walking along the rail trail to have a, a, a clearer look at, uh, at our stopover. Um, well before they get there so they can talk about it for a moment or two before they may perhaps make a decision to uh, <clears throat> to stop and uh, take advantage of it. Um, the, um, what else is on this drawing? That, uh, so the, this drawing shows incidentally the, the conditions on the site, <clears throat> which uh, may uh, show that there's really only, because of rights of way, uh, the railroad right away is 66 feet through the air, so it's 33 feet from the center line of the rail, the old rail bed. Uh, we're, we're pretty much tied up against that now, uh, so we really can't go very much further in toward the rail, rail trail uh, per se. Um, and on the other side is the 25 foot right away or 20 foot right away for municipal services. It's a sewer line or a water line or something in there, sewer line, I think. And um, uh, so we're, we're sort of stuck with where we are, which 
I, you know, happened when we built the building to begin with. Um, <clears throat> and um, like that. So we are planning at this point to uh, enlarge the, uh, the actual structure to uh, make places for bikers to um, bicyclists to um, uh, stand their bikes up and to and for and have a repair station. Um, the same kind of thing that we have at the uh, bike track and skate park, which is a uh, <clears throat> uh, a, a theft resistant uh, stanchion with um, with a bunch of bicycle tools attached to it and, and an air pump um, for people who want to sort of air up a bit or fix a loose chain or whatever, <clears throat> maybe change the tire. Um, that is that. So why don't you go to page two, please? And I will do that as well. Okay. So this is a, <clears throat> a quick sketch perspective of the, of the building, uh, not showing all the other things that can happen there, like <clears throat> have, um, potted flowers and, you know, hanging from the buildings and uh, signage on the sides of the, uh, on the, the, the sides of the building. Um, but it gives you a general idea of what it, what it would look like. The idea behind the building originally, and this carries it through, is that this is to be reminiscent of these, of the, sh of, of railroad stations, which is to say parallel to the track, close to the track, long and narrow, uh, with a station or a, a um, an office, <clears throat> uh, a train train um, a train office that um, we uh, offer shelter in clement weather and a place to buy tickets and all like that. Of course, in the Real thing, but in here, what it's basically doing is it's enclosing um, a restroom and a storage a storage room for the uh, for recreations use. Um, I have not drawn them in this building, but in subsequent drawings in this drawing, but in subsequent uh, views, you'll see that um, to the right, as we're looking at this, the uh, in between those columns will be picnic tables which will be six feet apart. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll be, uh, 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 what's, what's the current term of art? Uh, social distancing. Thank you, social distancing, yes. <clears throat> um, okay, let's go to the next page, please. If anybody has any questions, sing out, but I, if, if you could make them brief, I think we'll get up most of the way through this before anything really much comes up. This is the one that's, <clears throat> this is the drawing where the rubber meets the road. So the existing building is um, is pretty much intact, although I'm going to uh, make it a, a little bit wider to accommodate the uh, the necessary needs here. Um, the plumbing, uh, the the uh, this is by the way this is drawn as if it's a uh, a conventional um, in bathroom with. Uh, fixed plumbing inside, so it would be seasonal, um, with a sink, a toilet, and a baby changing station, <clears throat> um, and, and ADA accessible, so you can swing a five-foot circle in there. Um, and while we're on that subject, you notice that there's a dotted line at, in front of the, at, at the front door of the lav, and that is, as noted, it's a winter, or a winter portalette would go in there because um, we would not expect to be keeping this space heated unless you guys decide otherwise <clears throat> um, to keep the plumbing alive. Um, let me see. So uh, we're anticipating that three sides of this building, the one facing the rail trail, <clears throat> and then the north and the south sides will be um, displays and graphics and what all uh, the historical society is very interested in having a wall. <clears throat> uh, I would expect that the rail trail face, uh, the wall facing the rail trail would probably be information about the village and town and all like that. And perhaps the one all the way in, on, on the south side, the left side might be, um, um, well, other <laughs> announcements and things like that. Um, 
and the space all the way, the covered space uh, on the south, south end on the left end <clears throat> is uh, primarily for um, uh, recreation to use as uh, covered space uh, during the big events like the soccer events on the, you know, the countywide things. <clears throat> and um, on the right hand side, that could also be as well, or, or that, could, that could be a, uh, another, another picnic table. Um, so at the moment we show a bunch of picnic tables and, um, and all like that. Um, you notice that the roof, the dotted line that completely surrounds this project is the, is the drip line of the roof. Um, so there's, a, a, it, given any kind of inclement weather, there's plenty of, of uh, open shelter to be had um, to get out of the rain and all like that. Um, the cut the floor under the uh, under the the utility storage and the and the lab will be concrete um, for easy maintenance and all like that and to keep the plumbing alive. Um, okay, how about page three uh, four? <coughs> Is nothing more than. Uh, um, an, an elevation of the building, um, again, showing scale, that figure, that's a six foot figure in the, in the middle of it. So you get a sense of how, how big it is. It's pretty much like what's there, it just extends down. We may find, by the way, that this, that the grade, <clears throat> we have not stomped around, or, or I, have, I haven't taken a transit and a stick down to, um, to the, uh, where the new construction is going, heading toward, back toward the village. If that grade drops off fairly precipitously and, and becomes looks like it's going to be a really expensive thing to fill in, uh, we could easily step down between the between the picnic tables, you know, one step or two. But I'm not anticipating that's really going to be needed. Anyway, okay, so page uh, whatever five five. <clears throat> um, that's what that's what's up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. uh, those are two elevations. Um, the left one is the south, uh, the, the uh, showing the um, the end of the building, and the uh, there's a little notice. Uh, uh, to the left of the center column, there's a a hatched little uh, rectangle. Uh, I've been asked to make sure that that uh, they end up with a ticket window there, so that's what that shows. Uh, and as for the um, as for the right hand side, the drawing on the right hand side, that's just past the uh, supporting post, um, and it shows a you know a, a big wall, big blank wall with um, a, ma a map or whatever graphics on it or, or some such. So that's basically the project. The final page six is is just for my own study purposes for the roofing. And, um, and for the general roof lines and things like that. So roof framing and roof plan, um, that's necessary. It was necessary to do those for uh, pricing things out. So that's, that's where we're at with the, with the, uh, with the structure and the, uh, the landscape and the architecture. <clears throat> Any questions? Any questions from board members? Nice job. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I um, I was at the um, larger presentation um, last week where Kate Lally was also there and talked a lot about, okay, this is probably her presentation. Yep. Yeah, about, uh, um, that included here too. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just about the importance of um, subtle landscaping that has a really big impact in terms of the aesthetics of of the area, and we all know that Old Mill Park is already just such a beautiful space, but um, but it's also can be easy to miss when you're on the rail trail and you're kind of looking forward. So she talked a lot about, um, about, and she's so, she's such a master at being able to, I worked with her on the Brownfields project and she's just so good about seeing yeah, seeing the, the trees through the forest, so to speak, like she can see those those gems and talk about them and, and, and come up with easy ways of highlighting them. And she did that for us at this presentation. And um, 
so just yeah simple simple um landscaping um things she proposed um as well as the importance of signage and you all may know that she did the hyde park signs for the rail trail that those beautiful simple but elegant um blue signs that you see all over hyde park village um so she she had some great ideas around that and ways that we can bring um public art and public sculpture to this area. And, and I really see that as an incredible um, uh, economic development tool. Um, you know, there's so much research out there that towns that have public art are become destination towns. People, you know, like what we see happening in Cambridge and Jeffersonville with their silos, like people purposely come to a town for that, um, and then they pause, and then they see, oh, what, this place has, you know, a coffee shop and restaurants, and I want to see more of this, and come into the downtown. So, I'm I'm super excited about this project. I'm trying not to hold my breath too much because I really, you know, um, but but I I see this tying in beautifully with what we work so hard on with the Brownfields project, as you know, seeing this area is not just a trail, but but as a, a real destination spot, a real sort of um, you know little uh, of what our town has to offer, um, even beyond this spot. Um, and so I think from a from a from a the creative economy um, lens, from the beautification lens, from um, our our recreation um lens i think this is just a a perfect sort of uh step to to developing this area in a really in a really fantastic way so um i'm very supportive anyone else <clears throat> brian are there more of of kate's drawings or is yeah, I've got a couple more of Kate's. I can walk us through that briefly. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, very quickly, th this is kind of the big picture for Kate. Um, you know, talking about thinning those trees uh, to create sight lines is a, a theme that she has. Here's a little bit closer up. So what it would require for us to make this space for the bigger building is we would have to entirely cut back trees uh, a little bit wider than they are right now. And then the recommendation is to thin what we keep. Uh, <laughs> right now, it's difficult to see what we've got uh, because it's small and because the trees are pretty dense and close together. Uh, thinning the trees out and widening it would uh, greatly increase the sight lines for this structure. Uh, and we've got a couple kind of mock-ups of what we're looking at. One of the things that she points out is uh, widening this and where the space for the bike rack and bike repair station would come from uh, would actually be a really small change uh, because we've got an oversized culvert in there right now. If we just took that line down, we'd gain quite a bit of space where we could uh, use, the, use this uh, for the bike repair station. Um, we've talked about putting the uh, bike uh, tie-ups, everything there. We've talked about uh, equestrian use for that area, uh, you know, putting up a hitching post and some other things for the uh, horse use. Um, I see Walter has a hand up. I don't know if he's talk asking about this part or another, but Walter, I'm going to go ahead and bring you in. Okay, Walter, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just have a whole bunch of questions like, who's going to clean the bathroom? I mean, before you put in the bathroom, who's going to clean it? Um, right now, I go into that section of the rail trail. You know what that most dangerous part of the whole rail trail is? The driveway right now that comes out of the town garages and crosses the rail trail. We can't even maintain that as a town. So who's going to maintain the bathroom? Um, all I see that as a great little place for our heroin addicts to go to and nobody's going to clean it up and it's going to actually become an eyesore. Um, you talk about putting rocks along, you know, up there by the parking area. Well, guess what? That's going to make it really difficult to mow. 
we have a hard enough time mowing things as it is. So while I see some wonderful ideas, somebody's really got to stop and ask the question, who's going to clean the bathroom? And if you're not going to have this plan all figured out and who's going to clean the bathroom, then, then don't build it because otherwise it's actually going to be a detriment, not a positive. And I think you really need to address those issues first. Um, and you need to be planning on spending money for it too. Um, because you're going to have to have somebody go down there, clean it on a regular basis. And I mean a regular basis if you're going to have a bathroom. So please keep those thoughts in mind when you build this thing. Thanks. Thank you, Walter. Um, that is a, an essential part. Is ongoing maintenance for this is, is an essential part. And like Walter said, Ed, we're worse off having a, a filthy bathroom than we are not having one. Uh, that will be part of our discussion. We are discussing some of the, the cost measures uh, outside of this as part of the uh, executive session uh, where our belief is that early disclosure of some of our negotiation materials would disadvantage the town. So it is part of our ongoing plan. We understand the importance of maintenance on this, uh, but I don't have a lot that I can get into on what that's gonna look like in public session. This is Doug, might I say something? Go ahead, yes, Doug. Please. Yeah, the uh, present facility is plumbed for a toilet. We don't have to put in an indoor toilet yet, uh, but it was installed, it's, it's set up so that you could plop one in right now. But uh, the maintenance issue is one thing that we're, we, we're aware of, and uh, I'm sure the uh, board will be discussing. Okay. Um, a little bit more, some more pictures from Kate. So these are, uh, again, talking about those sight lines, that there, there's a lot of areas that with improvements, uh, with thinning the trees, with cutting them back, we'd see a lot more of the work that we, we currently have. And uh, you know, if we're investing more money in a greater expansion, we'd wanna make that, improve that visibility. Um, so that's a big focus here. Um, first picture is, uh, you know, she's highlighting that uh, in a lot of the stands that we've got there, that we have native species and we have uh, some invasive species. So if we cut back the invasive species, we could leave some nice uh, native species like birch trees uh, in their place. Um, again, this is a picture, uh, the one captioned current conditions, hide views. I can't honestly tell you exactly where that picture was taken uh, because it, it's a little hard to see any kind of landmarks there. Which one, the upper, the upper left? Middle. Uh, middle top. Oh, that's taken uh, uh, with your back toward the village. Um, uh, so the, the, with the gap in the trees, uh, you can see way, 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 way up there, the, the gravel that, uh, that goes down to the, goes down to the current okay. rail trail. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 That's it. Right. So, you know, you're back toward Parker and Stearns there. Yeah. The next one, you know, again, that's that stand of trees that's right at the very end, uh, right when you enter Old Mill Park. Uh -huh. um, thinning that down would also help connect the uh, the improved trailhead to the parking area that currently exists. Uh, and then we've got a couple other areas to highlight. Uh, there's a, the middle bottom is a shot from that parking area. And you can see that you can't see the, the trailhead from that side at all. And that would, again, help improve uh, use of that parking lot. The parking lot fills up pretty quickly, but um, yeah, uh, it would hopefully, uh, in addition to a, more signage that we're putting up on uh, uh, Railroad Street, directing parking there, um, you know, I think it would help if they could see where they're going right from where they started. There was a thought also that that might be a place for food trucks at some point. Yes. But yeah, that, that food trucks and other things that uh, might be interested during soccer games and other events at Old Mill Park, they might be able to use spaces like that uh, to set up. Uh, 
making a few suggestions about rail trail signage and about better ways to connect uh, with the trail to the rest of the community. Uh, and she highlights a loop that we can that we have in Johnson already, um, going around the field and around Old Mill Park and up Railroad Street. All right. Are there any other questions about this? I'm going to run through it a little quickly, but. Um, one of the things that uh, we have been approached, Nat, uh, is Nat on, by the no, way? No, he's not here. Yeah, he's not there. Okay. Uh, he, he, I think Kim Kotner, I believe it was she who asked him about um, uh, some sort of amenities for equestrians. Uh, horses are allowed on the rail trail. Um, and so I, I, I did a bunch of research into this and talked to, talked to half a dozen or so folks around who have horses. And almost all of them uh, said the same thing. Basically, all they need is a hitching post and uh, water and um, um, what else? Oh, and, uh, and, a way to, uh, uh, and a way to deal with uh, the occasional manure drop, <clears throat> which should be right by the hitching posts. So I mean, there's room for that. Uh, I, you know, I'm. A lot of them also said that they don't ride their horses on the rail trail because pe people coming up behind horses will often spook them because they don't know how to get how to go past a horse. So <clears throat> I don't know whether we that's something we want to encourage or not. But that's I just give that to you for information. Um, I have not included it in the in the plans at this stage, just because it's too recent. This whole discussion. Very good. Do we have any more comments from the board? If not, we would move on to the next item, which is enter into executive session to discuss the naming rights and the trailhead plan. Uh, Does the public have any comments? Well, we heard from Walter. I don't see any other hands up. Do you, Brian? No, I don't see any other hands raised. Okay. All right. I would move we go into executive session to discuss naming rights and the trailhead plan is allowed by 1 VSA section 313A1. You want me? Uh, With okay. Howard allowed and um, and Brian. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, for those of you on the line, we're going to go into executive session now. Uh, and after this one, we'll come out and we'll go right back in to discuss the gravel pit plans. And there is no further business planned for the rest of the evening. So with that, show us into executive session at 9.08. Okay, is there any further business? If not, I'll stand adjourn at 10.09. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.